It's been the question on the minds of many for years to replace or rehabilitate the old Cedar Avenue Bridge. Funding, either option, has always been the hang-up. For many years, we've looked at a number of different alternatives that would match the funding we had available. And typically, we had the maximum was about $5 million, which only allowed a limited number of those options to be explored. Uh, this past legislative session, uh, the legislature, with a great help of our local delegation and Representative Lincheski, made available additional funds that would fund a much wider range of options, including a rehabilitation of the existing bridge. At the September 9th Bloomington City Council meeting, a decision was made. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. no. A motion prevails with uh, Wilcox and Halting opposed. The bridge's recent induction into the National Register of Historic Places likely impacted the 5-2 vote to fix the bridge rather than rebuild it. The bridge is considered to be uh, historically significant because it is uh, multiple spans of a camelback truss and there's not many of those left in the, in the state. Uh, the construction is that it is a steel structure that's riveted together which makes it somewhat unique in today's uh, bridge building industry. According to Keel, the old Cedar Avenue Bridge was given to the city by the Minnesota Department of Transportation following the construction of the new Highway 77 bridge. As we restore it, this is going to become part of an important regional connection across the Minnesota Valley. And it's been the, the city's position that we would hope that at some point we'll be able to transfer ownership back to a state or regional organization to, for its long-term maintenance. The rehabilitated bridge could be reopened as soon as two years from now, if all goes accordingly. But now that there's a plan in place, what's next? The next step is to get the environmental documentation approved by the federal government. And because this project is using federal dollars and it goes through federal lands, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service property, um, you need to go through a, an environmental document that looks at a wide range of things, including uh, endangered species, impacts to uh, adjoining residences, etc., including historic preservation issues. And so this documentation addresses all those issues and hopefully resolves all of them. One thing is certain, a long-awaited connection will definitely be restored across Longmeadow Lake in the coming years. We would start uh, design work this coming summer, the summer of 2014. Uh, hopefully we would start construction the following winter, so that'd be approximately uh, January 1st of 2015. And if that all goes well, uh, the bridge should be open for uh, folks to use by the fall of 2015.